talking about this recent revelation that zapping brains with magnets can treat that troubling belief in God. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Magnets versus God. This ought to be good. Let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. Today we're listening to an interview by some guy named Joe Miller. The only Joe Miller I know is this guy. Oh, Joe Miller, you just found the marble in the oatmeal. You're a lucky, lucky, lucky little boy, because you know why? You get to drink from the fire hose! But I'm pretty sure that's not him. Anyway, apparently they've found out about what they think is some kind of magnetic mind control, and they're naturally going to freak out about it. So, entertaining story. Magnets apparently can treat that disorder of believing in God, and incidentally they treat another disorder. That's the claim, anyway. The claim is that uh, a sufficiently powerful magnet aimed at the exact center of your brain which is responsible for your belief in God and your attitude towards immigrants, can change those beliefs. And for the curious, that attitude change towards immigrants is to being more open-minded and accepting. A simple Google search reveals a few articles on the subject, and apparently it's true. Personally, I find it difficult to see this as a bad thing. The only way it could go sour is if it was forced on people. And theists wouldn't know anything at all about forcing ideals on others, now would they? Now, they probably don't tell you that that it also screws up your ability to add 2 plus 2, right? Well, that would certainly be a bit of a drawback. However, after going through several articles on the subject, I couldn't find a single reference to an effect on cognitive abilities. It seems to only affect attitudes. So maybe they don't tell you you can't add 2 plus 2 because it's not true. (laughs) <laughs> it probably doesn't even do what they claim. Uh, that's part of the problem. It's a very complicated study. It's it's based on a handful of undergraduate students. They paid him each 25 bucks, only 38. Okay, I'll grant them that 38 subjects is not nearly a large enough sample group for proper science. That's totally true. They split him into two groups. Uh, one group got blasted by this uh, magnet, and the other group got blasted too, but at a lower setting. Let's keep in mind that these magnets aren't new. They're actually already used to treat depression, and scientists know how effective they will and won't be already. And according to the articles, the control group was given a low amount of energy that they already knew would have no effect. And they asked him, do you believe in God? They asked him to rate on a numerical scale, do you believe in God? Do you believe in the devil? And they asked him to look at these uh, essays that were ostensibly written by immigrants. Ostensibly written. So already they're trying to cast doubt upon even the methodology of this study, suggesting duplicity, not to mention using the word blasted when describing the application of the magnetism. This can hardly be said to be an objective critique. One was written by an immigrant. It was a very pro-USA article. And the second was written by an immigrant, they said. and It was very anti-USA. And so people's ratings of this fellow who supposedly wrote this anti-USA article were somewhat negative, and that they turned into the idea that people are anti-immigrant. This isn't true. The article in question was taken from another study that had already proved reading the article stirred a reaction of loyalty to one's own demographic and against outsiders. The question being answered was whether those already established effects of the article could be dulled, negated, or reversed. First of all, there's this idea of pseudo-quantification. They have these hideously complex human emotions, like people's belief in God, and they try to assign a numerical measure to that. As opposed to what? If one were to conduct a study like this, by what standard should it be measured? Or are you saying that it can't be and we should just give up? And there already is a scale, of which this study used a modified version. It has a rather unfortunate name, but we all know what it means if we describe somebody as a sheep, so it makes sense in context. Point is, Dude Boy here is trying to be dismissive when, in fact, his target has more depth than he's willing to grant. He's trying to bias the audience, and that's dishonest no matter how you look at it. And they also did the same thing for people's belief in devils. Now, the two sort of go hand in hand with Christianity, at least, and the majority of people in this country are Christian, or at least post-Christian. So it's very difficult to tease out what's happening. They only showed a 
a small, very minor, fractional difference uh, in the belief in God, but not the belief in the devil. Again, this is all kinds of not true. In fact, the belief for both dropped just about the same amount relative to each other. The white represents God belief, and the dark gray represents belief in the devil. As you can see, the drop is almost exactly proportional. I don't know where this guy is getting his information, but it does not appear to be from the source. But that's not the thing. The, the, the real troubling aspect of this is why would they do such a study? That could be answered easily enough. One article said that they knew there was a part of the brain associated with solving concrete problems, and they wanted to know whether it could solve ideological ones, too. Another article pointed out that the area of the brain they were affecting involved threats, and people often turn to ideology, like religion or racism, when they feel threatened. Applying the magnetic force to that section of the brain might reduce that feeling in the same way it would depression. But again, our Ph.D. friend has his own ideas. Right. And there's two reasons, really. And the Go first ahead. is that, uh, that academics, academia, is largely populated by progressives, leftists. Everybody knows this. It's not even a secret. And they're always wondering why people aren't like them. That's not even slightly ironic or paranoid. Nope, nope, not a bit. Also, did you notice how the most progressive people also seem to be the best educated? Hint, hint. And so the second reason is there's become a huge industry in trying to explain the origins of religious belief. So they're always putting it down to things like either evolution caused some people to believe in God, or the brain itself is somehow causing people to believe in God, while, whereas people with more advanced and more enlightened brains uh, are less likely to believe in God. Now he just sounds like a spoiled little kid who got called names on the playground. Let's see here. It was just insinuated that religious people might be a little extra stupid, and for millennia, infidels and non-believers were stoned or burned at the stake. I think you'll live. Never mind that we've already shown that this is not why the study was conducted. Do you see this as having any connection to that increasing tendency of some on the left to try to characterize those of traditional values as needing treatment? It's not only I that see this. It's the authors of this study we're talking about. They make that very statement in their paper. What they're trying to do, they say, is to identify mechanisms or means to uh, identify religious people who might commit, in their words, zealous acts. People who are predisposed to believe in God and therefore might do something that's in line with that belief that they don't like. It took a little bit of digging to find the original paper and not just web articles, but eventually I did. The only place zealous acts are mentioned is at the very end. The authors very fairly point out that these acts can include courageous valor as well as horrific injustice, and that their study might help them discover both the triggers of and those most susceptible to these acts in order to gain some leverage over the end results. Just as an example, with something like this, 9-11 might have been prevented. Maybe. And they thought they could somehow find these people in advance, and that might lead to... They didn't use the word treatment, but they hinted around it broadly enough. I really don't think they did, but I'll link the study in this video's description, and you can decide for yourself. It's pretty short. There's only eight pages, and the last two and a half are acknowledges and references. And, and, and like, like you said, this study is one of hundreds of similar such studies. This isn't the only one. There's many of them, and all of them seek to pathologize either uh, standard traditional Christian beliefs, belief in God, or uh, conservative beliefs. I mean, these studies come out at a rate of about once a month. I'm going to have to take his word for that one, since I don't normally run in these circles. But let's suppose he's right, and not only are studies like this coming out monthly, but there really is an agenda behind the people making studies like these. That's what the peer review process is there for, to check people's work and to filter out biases or agendas. Now, if you want to posit that studies like this are allowed to skate through because the scientists doing the review are all predisposed to believing the conclusions regardless, frankly, you're an idiot. I could buy a few scientists being corrupt like that, but the entire scientific community... No. So if there is a pathology behind conservative or religious behavior, and if scientists truly are finding a cause for it, you might want to have a more intellectual and nuanced reaction that goes beyond essentially saying, nah uh 
you know, there were societies, uh, Soviet Russia, China, for instance, in which people were sent to re-education camps uh, for holding p uh, positions that were more traditional. And has that not happened here, too? You're speaking of uh, so-called gay marriage. And uh, the judges in these uh, in the Baker case, in, uh, the, the Bakers, rather, in Colorado, he ordered them to go to sensitivity training. He ordered the Bakers, he ordered the employees to go so that they would have a more enlightened view. Sensitivity training and re-education camps, totally the same thing. Being forced into a camp to live your life until you conform to the government's ideals and being sent to a support group where you're encouraged to be more accepting of people who are different and to stop behaving like a selfish bigot toward them. Yeah, I definitely see the parallels. You're not allowed to hold the Christian view, no matter what Justice Kennedy said in his strange opinion. You're, you have to hold the view that these judges want you to hold. If not, they'll try to re-educate you. It's not about what view you hold. It's about how you treat people who don't hold it. It's a very simple rule. Don't be a jerk. Tolerance isn't about liking something you hate. Tolerance is hating something and deciding it's none of your fucking business. Do you think that gay marriage or birth control or any number of other topics would have been an issue if Christians hadn't been making a fuss? We're not the ones saying you can't be different. Go ahead. Be a Christian. I'm going to think you're a chowderhead, but I'm not going to do anything about it. You're the ones who can't seem to let go, can't seem to live and let live. And it's that part of the brain that sees anything different as a threat, the part of the brain that this study is researching, that's what they've found has caused this sectarian and zealous rivalry that seeks to put down anybody different. Just calm down. Nobody is after you. Honest. Give us kind of a feel for the rapidity of change. I mean, how you see this moving forward and at what pace? Omar, it, it's, it's intensifying. Just today, uh, in this uh, online magazine, I won't even point out the magazine. I don't even want people to look it up. Well, I'm going to cite my sources in my video's description, because I'm, like, all honest and shit. People can go check my credibility. But it's a very well-known, popular magazine. They had a long article talking about how uh, being a Christian, being a, uh, I think it was an evangelical Christian, sort of makes one mentally ill. The demands that it causes, the, the changes that it makes in the brain, this stuff is increasingly common. Which, of course, suggests conspiracy rather than validity. Naturally. And basically what they're doing is they're trying to sort of bring back eugenics, even in a way. Because they're identifying what they say are biological constituents for belief. Therefore, they're able to test for these biological constituents that might make one more altruistic or one might make one more open to sexual experimentation. You think I'm joking, your readers might think I'm sort of being paranoid making this up, but no, this is exactly it. So studying the brain and discovering that, wow, the part of the body that does the thinking might actually be responsible for people's attitudes towards certain topics? Oh my gosh, it's Dr. Mengele all over again. There was a story this week too, just talking about the acceleration, that some employers are now asking for DNA samples not just detect, to detect medical or potential medical maladies, but to look for these kind of character traits they think they have identified that make one a, a lesser person. Yeah, right. You know why that employer was asking for DNA tests? To catch the person shitting all over the warehouse. It wasn't about job performance or discrimination. They wanted to catch a prankster by looking at the genes in his poop. And the judge ruled the DNA test illegal. So spin me a different tale about eugenics, pal. When you look at the U.S. Constitution, the American political exp experiment, based upon this idea of free exercise, faith, God, I mean, they've got to separate all this stuff out in order for them to carry on their agenda of just no parameters on sexual acts uh, or behavior, you know, the whole transgender crowd. I mean, they see their main opponent as being those of faith. And again, why is that, do you think? Might it have anything to do with how people of faith treat them? Nah, that couldn't be it. That doesn't let the Christians be the victims in this little drama. This is what happens when you base a religion around a martyr. This is still minority opinion, though, right? In, in psychiatry and elsewhere? I'd say no, I don't think it's minority opinion anymore. That's frightening. Shoes on the other foot now, huh? Not particularly comfortable, is it? Okay, so I probably shouldn't take too much delight in his discomfort, but 
Damn it, people like him have earned it for everything they've put the rest of the world through. In any case, the two of them are obviously quite paranoid, and entirely as a result of their own twisted mindset, judged by their own selfish example. It's sad, really. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance, saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. No rating and subscribing has been found to cause obesity, acne, and male pattern baldness in laboratory rats.